Grace to you in peace from God our Creator and our Savior Jesus Christ. Today is Trinity Sunday, one of the major feast days in the church. And yet, to some degree, the Trinity remains a mystery. There's probably a reason for this. In the back of the prayer book on page 864, in the Creed of St. Athanasius, it says, The Father incomprehensible, the Son incomprehensible, the Holy Ghost incomprehensible. In addition, St. Augustine said, If you don't believe in the Trinity, you will lose your soul. But if you try to understand it, you will lose your mind. So how can we deal with this mystery in a way that enables us to keep our souls and not lose our minds? Well, to do so, we must remember why the Trinity matters to us. It's because we're made in the image of God. That means the Trinity is also about what it means for us to be disciples. To follow Jesus is to live a Trinitarian life. So instead of thinking of the Trinity as a word puzzle or a Zen koan, maybe we need to think of it as a reminder of our calling. Therefore, as we become more and more faithful to who we are, we grow into a greater sense of God's eternal nature and who we are meant to be. It's why St. Augustine would hold up the host at the Eucharist and would say, Behold who you are, become what you see. The Trinity is not a mind game. It's not a vehicle for analogies like three-leaf clovers. It's the eternal triangle that is the DNA of the world. God is the creator, the mother-father, the beloved, the source. God is the redeemer, the son, the lover, the word made flesh, the friend. And God is the sanctifier, the spirit, love itself, the wind that transforms and unifies. Rowan Williams writes, The Trinity provides the root and energy of our being disciples here and now. So what does it mean for us in a world filled with disease and quarantine and yet another killing of an unarmed black man in our streets? How do we go from a theological concept to being disciples? And can we believe that the Trinity has anything to do with healing our country from the racism which not only infects us, but takes away lives? Well, I think a contemporary translation of today's gospel reading helps. Jesus says to the disciples, Go and train everyone you meet far and near in this way of life, marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. I will be with you to do this day after day, right up to the end of the age. This passage reminds us that the Trinity is not a geometrical formula. It's about discipleship. It's about being trained in this way of life. So to follow Jesus is not merely to get the words right, nor to affirm that the creed is correct. To follow Jesus is a way of seeing, a way of behaving, the early theologians came up with the doctrine of the Trinity in order to understand how to live a Christian life, which is a Trinitarian life. Therefore, we're called to embrace the Trinity as the way and to learn to go out and train everyone we meet far and near in this way of life by living it. So what does that look like? First, it means falling in love with the living God and recognizing that the Divine One who created heaven and earth is closer to you than your own breath and loves you beyond your conception just as God loves everyone and all races, God the Creator. It's giving thanks for all of creation, including your body and this world, which means an end to violence to all citizens, but especially to black men being killed in our streets, God the Son. It means listening to the creative force of the Spirit, 
that calls you to be an agent of justice, reconciliation, and compassion, and to believe in change. Instead of the inequity between our races, to believe that the beloved community can become near. God the Spirit. This is the practice Jesus gives the disciples to do, day after day, even to the end of the age. But remember the beginning words of the Great Commission, go out and train everyone you meet, everyone. Now, I can't actually see you, so I imagine, though, that you are thinking, this is nice, this is sweet, but what does it mean for me? Well, I thought of a lot of stories of Christian heroes as illustrations. I thought of Ruby Bridges, of Jonathan Daniels, of Betty Williams, of Martin Luther King Jr., and on and on and on. But too often we see these figures as sort of larger than life, so I want to offer an example from a different religion, a faithful Jew, who will give us a picture of what it means to train someone in this way of life. On a Sunday morning in 1991, Jewish cantor Michael Weiser and his wife Julie had just moved to Lincoln, Nebraska. They were unpacking their boxes when the phone rang, and a voice said, You'll be sorry you moved into 1510 Randolph Street, Jew boy. Two days later, a package was thrown against her door with pictures of Hitler and the Holocaust. Cantor Weiser called the police, and they said they thought it was the work of Larry Trapp, who was the Grand Dragon of the local KKK. Larry Trapp was suspected of firebombings in Omaha. Sometime later, Larry Trapp put up a program on the local access channel uh, promoting white supremacy. Michael Weiser was angry, but he called Larry Trapp and told his answering machine that, you know, Hitler put to death anyone who was handicapped since Larry Trapp was in a wheelchair with diabetes. And therefore he asked, why are you promoting Hitler? And then the next day, Cantor Weiser called again and called again, and he kept calling him. Finally, Larry Trapp answered the phone. When he asked Cantor Weiser what he wanted, he said, I thought you might need a hand with something, and I wondered if I could help you. Larry Trapp was stunned. He said, that's nice of you, but don't call anymore. Instead, Cantor Weiser kept calling and kept calling. Finally, Larry Trapp answered the phone and told the rabbi, I want to get out, but I don't know how. Michael Weiser told his wife about this, and she said, go to see him and take a peace offering. And she gave him a silver ring to take with him. When Cantor Weiser got to Larry Trapp's house, the KKK Grand Dragon burst into tears. He had on his fingers two rings with swastikas on them, and he took them off. And he said to Cantor Weiser, I want you to take these rings they're just a symbol of hatred and evil. And instead, he took the silver ring from Cantor Weiser and put it on his finger. After that, Larry Trapp resigned all of his racist organizations, and he wrote apologies to the people he had denounced. When he became terminally ill, he moved in with the Weisers, and Julie Weiser quit her nursing job to take care for him. Before Larry Trapp died, he became a Jew. Now, translate this story of two faithful Jews into our calling as Christians. Do we train everyone we meet in this Christian way of life by extending ourselves? Does the eternal truth of God, the incarnated example of Jesus, and the never-ending creative unifying wind of the Spirit move us to instruct people in the practice as Jesus has commanded us? Can those we meet know we are Christians by what we do instead of just what we say? When we witness racism in our cities, in our towns, do we reach across the divide? Do we become agents of change like Cantor Weiser? 
Do we give hope for those in fear or mourning from COVID-19? The risen Christ sends us out to make disciples in the name of the Trinitarian God. But let us remember what that means. It's not about getting someone to sign off on the catechism or the creed, because it's not a head thing, it's a way of life thing, it's a heart thing. To make disciples is to be a disciple. It's to have a Trinitarian way of life, connected to God the Creator, Jesus the Incarnate One among us, and the Spirit who blows in a new creation. So my brothers and sisters, the risen Christ sends us out today, just as those early followers were sent out centuries ago, to train others in this way of life, to bring them into the body through water and the Holy Spirit, and to teach them the practices of following Jesus by showing them what a Trinitarian life looks like, which is to become an agent of God's reign of peace and justice and mercy. And let us remember what the risen Christ says to them and says to us, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. <laughs>